Cancer is a disease that affects so many, and even after a person might have gotten rid of the disease, they hardly ever feel they're in the clear. Now, one local teenager has been fighting cancer and its effects on his body for nearly half his life, but he continues to adapt to win the fight. Our Ben Kaplan is here with Austin's story. Yeah, Austin Pierce wrote an essay detailing the struggles he and his family have been through since he found out he had cancer in 2003. It's been an amazing journey. Myself and photojournalist Mike Fessler are helping him tell. For the first 10 years of his life, Austin Pierce had a story very similar to many boys his age. It was good. I mean, I, I love life. I love sports. I enjoyed friends and family. I mean, it seemed just like a normal childhood, happiness, everything. Then that story drastically changed. My life because of cancer. As an athletic boy of 11 years old, Cancer is the last thing on your mind. That is until you hear the last thing you ever expected to hear. You have cancer. I remember lying in a hospital room late on the night of October 17, 2003 after completing an MRI. It was around 11 o'clock when my doctor entered my room, giving my parents and me the news that would instantly change our lives forever. A lot of it is like, sometimes almost like a dream. <laughs> And you just kind of wake up and go, wow, you know, how did this all happen or where did this all begin? Austin had a type of bone cancer called Ewing sarcoma. There was a five inch tumor up against his left pelvic bone. Chemotherapy was a must, but doctors were optimistic Austin would walk again. They said he'd walk again. That was what they thought. They were very optimistic, which was hopeful for him and us to think that with a lot of dedication and determination, he would walk again. What followed was two years of agony. Austin had horrible sunburns from the radiation treatments. He went from 110 pounds to just 77. The tumor eventually went away, but scar tissue still remained. So part of his pelvic bone had to be removed. After that surgery, I all but lost a function in my left leg. Strike one. In order to try and give me the use of my left leg back, the orthopedic surgeon put a cement spacer in my pelvis. It got a surgical infection, strike two. They then went in to rid my body of the infection. I still had no use in my left leg, strike three. Everybody was optimistic, even the doctors. I mean, I think they all thought that they could save my leg, and, but it just didn't work out. On December 13th, 2006, Austin's story changed once again, after he and his doctors convinced his parents it was the best thing to do. Austin made the choice to remove his left leg. We finally got to where we realized that, you know, Austin, you're right. This, as hard as this will be, and we will have to say goodbye to this leg, you are, you are meant for greater things. <laughs> After the amputation, there were still plenty of complications. Austin had phantom pains, still does to this day. He had to have weekly spinal taps to release unexplained pressure that was causing severe headaches. He also had to face the prospect of returning to Ferris High School, a place he hadn't been in more than two years. I was concerned that everybody's gonna look at me differently and that it was gonna be awkward and hard to catch up and stuff, but I really wasn't that far behind and Everybody was really welcoming and accepting of the situation. Austin found another source of strength from his childhood passion, sports. The sports have given, a, really have opened up a door for him to have an avenue and for us as well to kind of put some of the hard times behind us. After over 70 surgeries, some major and some minor, I have learned the hard way that when one door closes, another door opens. I was forced to give up able-bodied sports, but I'm now playing on a nationally ranked wheelchair basketball team. The team, St. Luke's, and success didn't come right away. First, it was really difficult. I mean, I dribbled the ball off my wheel and everything, and it was it's a big difference from able-bodied basketball. But the more he played, the more he improved. About a year and a half ago, Austin started to talk to college coaches. And this upcoming fall, he'll become the first male St. Luke's athlete to play wheelchair college basketball when he enrolls at the University of Texas Arlington. You talk about a dark time, that was all light at the end of the tunnel. All those things and that the fact that he got involved with Team St. Luke's, 
and he really still got to be involved um, with the sport he loved and now he's taking it to the next level is very exciting. I mean he's excited and when he's excited I'm ecstatic. <laughs> now and then people stare but I don't care anymore. So the story continues for Austin. As hard as it's been, he says he wouldn't change a thing. I love who I am. And if I could go back and change my life, I would pass up the opportunity to do so. There was times he would keep us as parents strong, which to me was amazing. So if I have a hero, it is my son. Nobody knows how this story will finish but most would say it already has a happy ending. And Austin hasn't just overcome his own personal tragedy, he's helped others do the same, meeting with individuals and their families before they go through amputations to try and prepare them for what they're about to go through. So truly one of those stories where you sit down with uh, the young man and uh, you really are truly thankful for you know, his perspective on things and also how your life truly is and you're a lot more uh, thankful for what you have. Thanks for sharing that, Austin. I, it's amazing what you have done to touch so many people through that story. Um, um, great job. You guys did great, but Thanks. Austin's a, a living role model. Yeah. Definitely.